This is a brand spanking new Scott Spark. And in this video, I'll give you my first ride on my local trails of this all new cross country race bike. Now, some of you might have seen my very first impression on this bike when I went to Glen Trace in Scotland to ride a bike with Tony from Scott UK. And that's a good fun day, but too short and too limited to really get to know the bike properly. But now I have the bike in my hands. I got it for about the next six weeks. So I'm going to give you a first ride impression on my local trails. And over the next few weeks, I'll give you a midterm and a long-term review on this bike. So if you have any questions about this bike that you want me to answer in these videos, then do let me know by leaving a comment down below. And let me tell you, it's great to get back on a mountain bike like this after riding quite a lot of gravel bikes over the past few weeks. Talking of which, if you want to see how this bike compares to a state-of-the-art gravel bike with a suspension fork and a dropper seat post, then check out the video linked up above. Some very interesting results from some time comparison riding between the two bikes. But in this video, we'll talk about this bike, how it rides, and go through some of the details on this very striking looking bike. So let's dive in. The bike just feels so rapid straight away and almost needs no effort to get it up to speed. And it's this feeling of speed and efficiency that really marks this bike out. I mean, clearly it's a race bike. You can feel it when you're riding it. You've got a stiff carbon frame, low overall weight, really efficient suspension that only works when it really needs to. And it just wants to go fast all the time. And I know that's a cliche, but it's really true with this bike. They set out to make a faster bike than the old one, and I think they delivered. One feature on the Spark that has always divided opinion is a twin lock, the two levers on the handlebar that control the suspension. So front and rear suspension, you can have locked out, a traction mode, or fully open. Now, personally, I don't really use a lockdown mode, maybe on the road or a road climb, that's very rare. Uh, fully open mode works extremely well. You get nice, plush, supportive suspension, get all that 120 mil when you need it all the time. And that middle mode, the traction mode, is basically a climbing mode, and it firms up the suspension, makes the bike feel more efficient and a bit faster on the climbs. But I find it so well controlled in the open mode Unless you're really mashing the pedals, the bike is nice and supportive and efficient on the climbs. So it's clear the new Spark is a fast bike. Um, is it faster than the old bike? Yeah, probably. The frame feels a bit stiffer and a bit tauter. Feels a bit more responsive when you really get on the power. But the biggest change is when you come to descending, because the new bike has more travel. It's now up to 120 front and rear. And we have slightly slacker geometry so slacking off the head angle, increase the reach. The changes aren't as extreme as some other bikes out there, not quite a down country bike, not in this RC build anyway. There is a trail version with a longer fork, which is probably more of a, a down country. But this bike, it retains everything you want from a cross country race bike. So very agile, fast handling for getting around corners and overtaking people, but it gives you much more descending capability. And for me, much more fun when you're going downhill. So when you earn all the gravity tokens from toiling your way up climbs, you can really cash them in on the way back down. Just an easier bike to ride fast downhill over kind of quite tough, slippery terrain. The sort of tracks where a typical old school cross country race bike would probably struggle a bit, in my hands at least. I know in the hands of very skilled cross country race bikes, these bikes can descend very fast. But for an average Joe like me, the geometry changes and the extra travel definitely give you a bigger buffer, a bigger kind of comfort zone when you are descending. And that all makes for a race bike. That's a really good fast trail bike. A bike for people who like me want to ride fast off-road, but don't race anymore, but still want the speed, the efficiency and the agility of a race bike. But I want a bike that's going to reward on a descent as well without lugging around the extra weight of a bigger travel trail bike. And there are also some really neat details and features on this brand new Spark. So let me give you a closer look at some of those. What I love most about the bike is how good it looks. I mean, doesn't it look clean 
and very fast. So the biggest change, departure from the old Spark, is how the rear shock is now concealed within the carbon fiber frame, right down by the bottom bracket. A very bold design, it has to be said. Otherwise, the suspension design, the kinematics, the linkages are pretty much the same as the old bike, although travel has now been bumped up to 120 millimeters, up from 100 of the old bike, and that's matched by 124 on the front as well. There's also a trail version of this bike with a 130 fork, slightly bigger tires, so more of a down country build if you prefer. Aside from looking absolutely amazing with that rear shock concealed within the frame, is how it should be protected from the elements, by which I mean mud. As you can see, it's pretty muddy here at the moment. We've had a lot of rain recently, so the trails are very moist and very slippery. So I'll be looking over the next few weeks to see how well that rear shock is actually protected from the elements, how that compartment in the down tube is sealed, and whether it can keep mud and rain out, or whether mud can get in and then eat away at the rear shock and all the bearings inside there. But hopefully on paper, it should be a good solution for winter riding here in the UK and other damp places around the world. Setting up the rear shock is a little bit more tricky than a normal exposed rear shock, but Scott had worked really hard to make it as simple as possible. You have a sag marker on the rear stay, so you can see it when you're sat on the bike, see how much sag you have from 15 to 25 to 30%. There's a small window, so you can see where the O-ring is on the rear shock shaft, and that compartment gives you good access to the, the shock in terms of rebound adjustment and the air valve on there as well. So a little bit, more tricky, but not the end of the world. And once you've got it set up and dialed in, you shouldn't have to do it too often as well. Setting up the SID fork is an absolute breeze because RockShop put the sag markings on the fork leg itself and recommended settings on the back. So an absolute breeze, get the fork set up. There's a staggering 26 models in the brand new Scott Spark range, with prices starting at just over £2,000 and rising all the way to £12,000. The model I'm riding is a Spark RC World Cup Axis and retails for £7,299 and is fully loaded with some of the best kit you could ask for. They've got a SRAM X01 Eagle Axis 12 speed wire group set with Shimano XTR disc brakes, a Syncross carbon wheel set with matching one piece carbon handlebar and stem, fast rolling Maxxis Recon race tires, a RockShot SID Select fork, and a Fox dropper seat post. And how much does this size large weigh? Well, I'll let you have a stab at guessing and reveal the actual weight in the next episode, so stay tuned. So far, then, based on this first ride, it seems that Scott had pushed a spark in a good direction without risking alienating that sort of core cross-country racer um, group that want a race bike like this, but while also opening up to people who don't race, but want that lightweight, fast cross-country trail bike. So it definitely appeals to a wider audience than before. Uh, just a really fun, fast bike. So there we are then, my first ride on a brand new 2022 Scott Spark, a bike that lives up to its looks by delivering impressive performance on the trail. This is very much just a first ride, as I said. There will be more reviews coming very soon. And let me know what you want me to check out on this bike by leaving a comment down below. And if you want to see how the bike compares to a state-of-the-art gravel bike, then check on this video up here. And don't forget to subscribe and hit this button down here. Right, thanks for watching. See you all again very soon.